you talk about attrition coming down and that has been the case as far as your peers are concerned as well. But what about hiring, uh, especially given the fact that there is some degree of uncertainty even though you are cautiously optimistic but you continue to be uncertain about the environment? Yeah. Look, when attrition comes down, your hiring by design slows a little bit. Attrition has come down quite dramatically, right? We're at 17.5% on a, a quarterly annualized number which is dramatically less, 360 basis points less than last quarter. I think it will temper even further as we move into mm. Q4 and beyond and so I think why that do you think that's the case I mean is it because the the environment has changed or on account of the wage hikes that you've taken no I think I think it's a combination of different factors I think it's a combination of what we are doing internally as an organization but the reality is also that the environment has slowed the euphoria and the craziness mm -hmm. of financial year 21 22 is just not transacting in this year as well and I think that bodes well for the bottle it also bodes well for stability and I think that's a good thing for organizations uh, so uh, you said deliberate hiring, which means uh, what exactly in terms of numbers? No, I, I meant that simply that hiring slows down when attrition mm. slows down as well, right? We have, so we will continue to hire as we need. We have now hired more in three months, in the first nine months of this year, mm. in terms of freshers than we hired the entire of last year. So we continue to build our base. We continue to sort of re-strengthen our pyramid to bring down overall costs, which again attrition helps you with because you don't have the frenzy of lateral hiring, you yeah. don't have the frenzy of, you know, uh, at some point outrageous rate salary increases as people jump shift from one job to the other. Mm -hmm. And that just bodes good for the model and for the industry, I think, overall as well. Mm -hmm. So where are you at in the journey as far as the future of work is concerned between bringing back people yeah. uh, to office, which is the thing with a lot of companies at this point in time, yeah. or still giving some degree of flexibility yeah. in a hybrid yeah. mode? So, in, so we have we about 30% of our people between customer locations and our locations that are now coming in three days a week. I have a couple of design principles that I think are important on this. One is the future of work is hybrid. So there will be some sort of a model in which people work from home partly and work from the office partly. Two is you've got to think through how do you access talent. Do you get the talent to come to the big cities where you are or do you access talent and go there? So does that have implications in terms of some people working from home on a permanent basis because you want to be more inclusive? Does that have implications in terms of many centers but smaller centers? And that's something we've got to think through. Do we go to talent or does talent come to where we are? And the third thing is relationships matter. You know, relationships matter. I think one of the advantages where it works so well during COVID is because people knew each other. Mm. And as organizations have grown, as attrition has picked up, we have lots and lots of new people in the organization. And so context uh, and relationships matter uh, in the future of work. And so we'll have to think through some model where all of our people can come back some of the time. And so we're working towards that. It's mm. a slow but steady journey. And we'll see how we progress. The other learning also, Shireen, is that you can't be too fixated mm. on a point of view. You've got to have the openness to say, hey, look, this is working, and now this is not working mm. anymore. But the future of work, we believe, is a combination of these three, four factors, and we'll see how it unfolds.